Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. In this short video, we're going to take a look at how science should and shouldn't be done. The map on the left shows where NOAA and NASA have temperature data from 1884. They have very little temperature data from South America, almost none from Africa, almost none from the Middle East, and none from Antarctica. But that doesn't stop them from creating very detailed temperature maps for area where they have no data. They show almost all of Africa as being cold in 1884, despite the fact that they don't have any data from these blue regions. The one thermometer they did have data from was very warm, so they showed a small red spot on the map. But they assumed that the rest of Africa was cold because their global warming theory is based on the idea that when carbon dioxide levels were lower, temperatures were lower as well. Then they used their fake map to try to convince people that carbon dioxide is making temperatures warmer. Everything they're doing here is completely fraudulent and is propaganda, not science. And unfortunately, that is the situation with essentially all of the climate information which the public sees from NASA and NOAA. NOAA's graph of Tennessee maximum temperatures shows a slight cooling trend since 1895. This graph comes from their adjusted data set. Now let's compare their adjusted data to the data which was actually read from the thermometers. The thermometers show that the warmest year in Tennessee was 1921, and there's been a strong cooling trend since then. But NOAA alters the data to erase almost all of the cooling trend. Note, though, that despite their data tampering, 1921 is still the warmest year in their graph. By tampering with the data, U.S. government agencies have made the data useless for doing science, because they've made the cooling trend disappear. The data tampering which NOAA is doing in Tennessee cools the past by about one degree. It's almost certain that anyone doing climate research in Tennessee based on NOAA's fake data is going to reach the wrong conclusion. But we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to do some real climate research about Tennessee. This graph shows the average daily maximum temperature in Tennessee for every day since 1895 which is about 94,000 days. I want to see if there's any regular patterns in the data, but it's difficult to do using this graph. The reason why it's difficult with this graph is that we have these annual cycles with very large temperature swings. Temperatures in summer are about 50 degrees warmer than temperatures during the winter. But we can eliminate these annual variations by calculating the 365-day mean shown in red. In engineering, we would describe this as a low-pass filter. We've eliminated the highest frequencies from the graph. Now let's zoom in on the 365-day mean. We can see a long-term cyclical pattern which coincides closely with the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation. And we can see that the warmest 12-month period in Tennessee occurred around the year 1925 rather than 1921. But what caught my attention about this graph is these regular short-term oscillations with large swings in temperature. In order to determine the frequency of these short-term swings, I ran this graph through a discrete Fourier transform. That's a simple mathematical operation which simply scans the data for different frequencies and finds out how often they appear. And this was the result. There are regular oscillations at 3-year frequencies, 4-year frequencies, 5-year frequencies, 9-year frequencies, 11, 18, 32, and possibly some more. The most regular short-term frequency is 11 years, which coincides with the sunspot cycle. It seems that there's a pretty good chance that solar cycles are affecting the weather in Tennessee. And I see the same 11-year cycle in other states as well. But on the other hand, there is no correlation between Tennessee temperatures and carbon dioxide, shown as the black line. But by tampering with or hiding older temperatures, they can create the appearance of a fake correlation, which doesn't actually exist in the real world. 
And that is exactly what NOAA is doing. They're cooling the temperatures before 1960 to create the appearance of a correlation with carbon dioxide, which has nothing to do with reality. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on this scam for 16 years. You can visit him and his family on the web at realclimatescience.com.